Hey, did you know that Aerial Arts is actually a huge family? There are Aerial Silks, Aerial Hoop, Aerial Hammock, Aerial Chandelier, Aerial Chair, Aerial Diamond, and a whole lot more. If you want to know the very basic of what Aerial Art is, stick around to the end because in the next few minutes, I will share with you everything that I know about Aerial Arts. I'm Eunice from Aerial Practice. I do aerial dance and I share my tips and routines on my channel here at aerialpractice.com. If you're new, I would like to give you a big welcome and invite you to click the subscribe button so you can see all the future videos. If you're a fan, I thank you for coming back for another wonderful episode. Today, I'm going to share some background on aerial arts and how can beginners like you and me do amazing tricks like this. I've also asked the community on their questions, so there will be a Q&A at the end of this video for you to get some of these answers. Before we dive into the topic of today, I just want to share that these are my personal opinions. If you are an experienced aerialist, feel free to leave a comment to share your view with the community. Whether you are trying to decide if aerial art is for you or which apparatus to use, I hope that my humble experience will help you to gain a little understanding. First, let's discuss the most common confusion, which are aerial yoga and aerial dance. You may find aerial activities in both yoga and dance studio, but the two focus is actually quite different. Perhaps the best way to imagine it is to take out the word aerial. I don't think anyone would think yoga and dance are equal. That should also be the case for aerial yoga and aerial dance. Aerial yoga is a branch of yoga using hammock as an assistant tool to do yoga practice. Aerial dance uses hammock or other apparatus to dance in the air. My very first lesson with the aerial hammock was also an aerial yoga lesson. And that's only because I didn't know what aerial dance was and aerial yoga just seemed less intimidating. I got a feel of what it's like working with the aerial hammock and I just loved it so i started doing aerial hammock dance and aerial sling which is what i share on my channel here aerial practice plus aerial hoop top 10 stretch and aerial fitness routines now let's talk about aerial silks and aerial hammock if you just look at the fabric itself it is pretty similar for silks and hammock the material might be different coming from different sellers the red hammock set that I have is stretchier and I have also used rougher fabric in some studios before. If I also tie the ends up and then hang them to anchor points, then I will have myself a hammock. Or I can add a figure eight so I can set this set up as silks. A standard aerial silk is 9 meter long. So the only set that I can use at Aerial Silks in my low ceiling environment is this 7 meter long set. So how much fabric you need depends on how you're going to use it and how much space you have for it. I'm not a big fan of Aerial Silks, but I use it to practice climbing to build a strong foundation for Aerial Arts. To keep this video short and sweet, the last apparatus that I will discuss today is the Aerial Hoop. You will find there are a couple of types of Aerial Hoop. There are single point, double point, apparatus that looks like a hoop but shaped a little bit differently. There's also lollipop hoop. It seems similar, but think of it as a cousin. You can check out Dancing in Circles. She has both lollipop hoop and aerial hoop tutorials for you to see the difference. I mostly work with single point hoop because of the tricks that I do. And I would say that the different shapes and different points just to give you a different possibility to feel amazing in the air. Learning aerial art, it's like building a relationship with your equipment. Sometimes it can literally get quite intimate. I remember my first few times trying to sit on the hoop. I wasn't very strong, so I just couldn't avoid hitting my private part and it really hurts. But the more that you practice, the more familiar you become, the more possibility you open up with your equipment. I know that some competitions require the performer to only use untaped hoop and I know that some aerialists prefer the hoop tape. It can prevent slipping, especially if you sweat a lot. I should be retaping my hoop soon. At that point, I can share with you whether I like a better tape or not tape. 
Now that I have introduced you the three popular aerial apparatus, perhaps you're wondering if aerial arts is for you. Whether you think you're lacking of flexibility or strength, or just simply a little bit worried of falling, there are always thousands of reasons to not do something. But I believe that if it's important for you, you will find a way to face your challenges, just like I did, if it is your goal and if it makes you happy. I got into aerial arts because I was tired of being clumsy and weak. I'm not looking to be a performer or to uh, be at a circus level. I just want to work on being healthier and a better person every day. If you feel like sharing, you can let us know in the comment section below why you're interested in aerial arts. If you're looking to start and not knowing how or which apparatus to use, let me share with you my experience before diving into the Q&A. Aerial could be dangerous, especially without any experience. Because without knowing what to anticipate in the air, you could get yourself seriously hurt. So the best way to start is to have in-person lessons where you can be watched and be warned before some dangerous tricks. If you have some related background like dance or gymnastic, it will be slightly easier for you. But if you don't, don't worry. I also started without any background. I did just fine. <laughs> I did look like a crap at the beginning, but now I'm slowly improving two years from then. You can find plenty of free resources on this channel for flexibility, to build strength, and to get stronger. And when you're ready, there are also practice videos for hammock and hoop. If you don't have a studio nearby to start in-person lessons, I have also tried to add aerial lessons during my travel. It was how I learned how aerial is taught in different countries, and later these lessons also turned into online lessons, which I still do regularly to learn and improve. I started with hammock because it made me feel the safest, but very quickly I got curious about hoop and silks and start taking lessons for them too. So if you don't know which one to choose to start, I would just say to go for the one that make you feel the safest. Because if you're a fan of Ariel like the rest of us here, I know that at some point you will just try them all. So if you have watched this far, next up for you is some answers to the questions from the community. Sunflower XX asks, how long did it take to get used to the hammock? At the beginning, it was per position. And then very quickly, I just got comfortable in most of the positions. If I would use one as an example, let's think of the one from straddle to the sitting position. It took me about a couple of practice. And at that point, I was only practicing once a week. So that could translate into a month. I think it is a lot harder to get used to spinning than anything else, which I still don't think I am used to it yet. Next question is from Audrey. Hi, Audrey. How do you not fall while laying down in the hoop? I think you mean this trick here. First of all, I will never let my hands go if I don't feel that my position is secure. Remember, safety is number one in practicing aerial. And if I'm not sure, I will always get a spotter to support me in case I need any support from the hoop. And next, what I would do is to keep my glute and my thighs engaged to support this position. And if you do it right, it is very unlikely that you will fall. So next question, it's from Maddie. She has a double point Lyra at home and she loves my hoop videos, but maybe I could propose some modification. So I believe most of the flows I share in the channel, you should be able to practice the double point Lyra, maybe except for top bar one. But do let me know if you'll see any challenges when you're following the rest of the flows. And I'll be sure to share when I get a chance to work with a double point Lyra. Sam's question is, will the pain continue with the pressure from the fabric in certain parts of the body? Or does it go away when losing weight? I think this question is quite similar to the next one, which is how do you deal with the fabric being pulled so tightly around your limbs? So they're both related to the discomfort and perhaps rope burn as well. Sometimes I do end up wrapping myself too tight when I practice, but the more experienced you are, the more you just know how to pull the fabric, adjust the position to make you feel more comfortable. So first tip that I have for you is to be patient 
experience comes in time and going from uncomfortable to comfortable is also a process of learning. I would keep practicing these positions, I just wouldn't spend too long in them but practice more often and soon you will just forget how uncomfortable it used to feel. The second tip here is to keep engaging the leg muscles. Imagine if someone would punch you in the stomach. I personally would keep all of my muscle really tight so when the punch hit my stomach, the impact is a little less and I feel a little less pain. So this is also the same case with the legs wrapping around the hammock or the hammock wrapping around the leg. The more tightly you wrap your muscles together, the less of the impact that you're going to feel. And also it will help if you work on strengthening your leg muscle outside of aerial. The last thing that I want to share about rope bird is to make sure that you wear pants or shirts that cover the area that will be in contact with the hammock. So in this video here, I wanted to wear shorts, which was a huge mistake because it hurts a lot afterward. So now you can see that I try to stick to pants as long as I still remember the pain from that video. <laughs> so the last question of today is from you know, how do you know it is not in a fabric or just the ceiling to the floor height, making some move hard to do, for example, the cross on the back. This is a great, great question and especially very true for working in a low ceiling environment that sometimes I end up not having enough fabric for a lot of the moves and I have to make adjustments which is okay because I'm still really grateful that I have a chance to practice. So first I start with practice um, with two points to have maximum space and then I will add spinning which they will come back together. If I need more space then I will also add daisy chain to give myself more room to move in the air. How do I know whether I have enough fabric is just to try. If I'm in a certain position and I can't pull more fabric to put my legs in a certain position, then I know that there is just not enough room for this trick. That was all the questions for today. The last thing that I want to share is that it's never too late to start. Give yourself a chance to fly and to feel amazing in the air. There are plenty of free resources to help you to get started with in this channel. If you have more questions or comments, Leave them in the comment section below and I will try my best to get back to you. Thank you for being with us today. Take care now, practice safe, and see you in next week's video. Bye!